Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you a paper painting style collage that I did on canvas for a viewer who asked me to do this as a commission to memorialize their very beloved pet Barlow who had passed on recently. And so the customer sent me these photographs and I printed them off on my inkjet printer so that I would have an idea of the personality and the color and, and um, you know, everything about this dog, Barlow. And something that I sometimes do if I really want to get exact shape correct, rather than freehand drawing it, I sometimes trim it out. So since these photographs are just printed off on my printer, they're not, you know, special photographs, they've just been printed out, I can cut them apart if I need to. So I decided that the face that I wanted to use in the paper painting was this, this one where Barlow's head is slightly turned and it looks like he's gazing off into the distance. So that was going to be my face portion. So I trimmed that out of the photo and actually traced around it to get the shape correct. And then now I'm drawing in the details to you know fill out the photograph or not the photograph the drawing of the photograph then there was another photograph that I really enjoyed and one thing that she said was that Barlow liked to go hiking out in the wilderness and there's this picture of him up on probably some sort of a peak of one of the hikes where you get up to the top and then you look around at the beautiful scenery and I wanted to incorporate that type of a feeling into the background of the photograph as well as I thought that the foreshortened angle of the photograph where she was probably standing kind of above Barlow and looking down would be a, a pleasing way to add in his body without actually putting his entire body um, I don't know if you guys know what I mean by foreshortened but it's kind of like when the angle the angle of the photograph might make things look look a little bit different than they would from directly on. But I thought it would work for my composition for this particular piece. So I'm using kind of the combination of the two photographs plus then the, the colors from the other photographs. And, you know, the eyes are very important. And so I wanted to make sure I got those golden rusty colored eyes correct and then of course the fur so here's my drawing um, I had taken the canvas and made my piece of paper to draw on the same size so that I could get the, the sizes correct and then now I'm starting with the background using all different types of papers <clears throat> the first one I started with is actually some paper from a envelope that was sent to me it's kind of a gray blue and a very neutral color and I thought that was a good place to start with the sky I tend to work top to bottom and not the other way around I think that the layering of the papers going over each other works better if I do it from the top and then work my way down in most cases sometimes you really need to do it bottom up because of the way the papers are going to um, lay over each other like scales you might want to do it from the bottom up but I think most of the time I do it from the top to the bottom sometimes from the side actually I guess I don't know maybe that's an over generalization I guess maybe I do it on a case by case basis <laughs> I'm not sure but uh, I have a lot of different types of papers I have them sorted uh, the smaller pieces sorted into these plastic boxes by color so I pulled some of the blue papers out and these are deli paper I think pretty much that has has paint on it or it might have ink on it um, I try to save everything I I tend to hoard all my papers even the little teeny tiny bits <laughs> if they're pretty I keep them so the next thing I did once I got that top section done is I wanted to make sure that I stayed true to the drawing composition because I liked the way it was laid out. So I trimmed the top part of the drawing off so that I could get that top section correctly positioned on the canvas. And then I started to fill in 
Um, there's, there's like a sky in the background and then there's a mountain and then you can see at the bottom of the mountain, there's like a lake or a stream showing a little bit. And then there's part of the rock that Barlow was sitting on and some trees and bushes and things coming in from the sides that are in the foreground, whereas the mountain in the lake or, or river is in the background. You know what I'm saying? So I'm continuing to look at the photograph and try to get my colors and shading and angles correct um, as I'm going. So that blue part is supposed to represent the lake or river that's in the background. I can't really tell because of the way the angle is. There could be like a really big lake and you wouldn't see the full thing. You know what I'm saying? Because they're up on a mountain or hill and looking down it to the to the background. So then I start building up the hill, thinking about the different striations of colors. There's some green, there's some grayish tones, there's some golden tones of maybe some fall foliage over there or something. And so I'm trying to pick different shades of papers out of my paper collection here that is going to represent that kind of a, of a shadowed background with some foliage and some different colors. So are they exactly matching? No, I don't care that they're exactly matching. What I want is the feel of the way that background looks. It's not about matching the colors. It's about matching the shapes of color more. And so it's, it's an intuitive process. It's something that you think about as you're going and it's not, um, it's not about being exact because there's no way that I'm ever going to do realism. It's just, I mean, if you want realism, go look at the real thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is a artistic representation of the subject matter. So it's not going to be ever exact. It's supposed to portray the feeling of Barlow being out in the nature that he loved and hiking and, you know, having fun climbing up the hills and panting and wagging. And, you know, that's this is what we're going for. So I'm just continuing to fill in the papers. And um, this this piece is deli paper. So I built up the mountain on the deli paper with my colored papers. So now there's two layers and then I'm gluing it down to the canvas. Deli paper is so thin that you can do it this way. You can make kind of pattern pieces and put your your collage over the top of the pattern piece and then glue the whole thing down. And nobody will ever know that deli paper's there. It's just really thin and it, it makes it easier to conform to shapes. And as you saw, I, I trimmed off the bottom, the top part of it and then I laid it over and now it's kind of overlapping the sky. So everything gets covered. Everything is colored and it just works out really well. So sometimes you can just glue right onto the canvas. Sometimes you are um, making a pattern piece and gluing onto that and then gluing that onto the canvas. And this is a, a technique that I developed for myself. Um, when I first started paper painting, I really drew or in, in, in many cases, probably most cases, I did an underpainting on the canvas. So I painted a painting on the canvas and then I glued the paper over the top and it would get super fussy around the edges, trying to make something straight around a corner with torn paper was sometimes annoying. And that's when I started to develop this idea of making layers and making patterns and um, using my scissors sometimes. And then of course, most times tearing. I like the look of layered tear, torn paper, but I like to be able to cut my shape out. So it's a style that I've developed. Um, this is not the only way to do it. And it's certainly not what other people do. So if you're, if you're really thinking about getting into paper painting collage, you can develop your own style because it's art, it's artistic expression, it has nothing to do with what other people are doing. 
so now I needed some more papers that were blacks and browns mixed together. Barlow looks like a black dog and probably if someone were to have seen him they would say he's a black dog but really he has a lot in the pictures anyway a lot of shades of brown mixed into the black so I needed some papers that were that sort of color tones that I could tear up and use in the, the shadows and highlights. So I went ahead and got my six by six gel plate out and some um, of the deco art paints that were designed for artists. They're called the um, traditions line, which I just recently received and I wanted to try them on the plate. So I'm making some patterns. In some cases, I'm using some different stencils. In other cases, I'm using a stick, <laughs> which this is a skewer stick, and drawing kind of a uh, fur pattern onto the gel plate and then picking it up with another layer so that you get a real layered look. I did this for a while. I didn't uh, keep it all in the um, in the video because this process was about five hours and to even I didn't even make be, I'm not even able to make it into 20 minutes and really get the whole complete picture of what I did I think it's closer to 30 but um, you know I'm trying to give you the idea of the process so that if you were to want to do something like this you would be able to try it and be able to see how it's done so now I've traced my drawing. <laughs> so you can see there on the left is my original composition drawing. And at this point it's been cut apart because I needed placement. I, I wanted Barlow to be slightly to the right hand side, not smack dab in the center because I think that it's more pleasing to the eye to have things slightly off so that the eye can travel around the canvas in a circular pattern without falling off the edge. So I trimmed out the shapes so that I could make them more pleasing in position. So then I took a piece of another piece of deli paper and I traced onto the deli paper the drawing so that I could start building my paper painting over it. So that's what I'm doing now. I have all those different papers that I just created on the gel plate and I'm not using them as holes. I'm, um, you know, not whole pieces at all. I'm taking different areas of them that have the right shade that I prefer and tearing them into little small pieces so that I have all kinds of tiny little pieces of paper to place in the, in the, looking at the photograph, you can see it's up at the top, trying to place the shadows and the highlights and the colors in the proper way so that it will look like the photograph. It will look like Barlow. It'll be recognizable as Barlow when it's done. If you are creating a piece, any sort of a paper painting, out of your head, you can do whatever you want. If you want, you know, if you want the dog to be blue, you can make the dog blue because it's a creation out of your head. If you're creating something that's supposed to represent a thing, or in this case, an animal. He's not a thing, he's an animal. But if, if you're trying to get the feeling of a specific thing, then you really do need to have the photographs and be looking at the photographs the whole time and um, using them as your inspiration and not what's in your head. So I'm not trying to create this piece out of my head at all. I mean, my, the composition is my idea. The way I see the photograph is going to be different from anyone else because we're all individuals. We all see things in the way that we see them. And so I am duplicating the photo in the way that I see it. Do you know what I'm getting at? It's not my imagination. It's my interpretation of the photograph. And I'm, I'm constantly looking at the photograph and trying to translate what I see and what I perceive in the photograph onto the paper and onto the art. And that's where my personality comes in. That's where my artistic um, ideas and expression come in to the piece where my idea of who Barlow was and what Barlow looked like and how I feel about the photographs is going to be different than anyone else's. 
and hopefully I got my impressions correct <laughs> and um, was able to, I mean, she says she likes it. She she's, has it and she says she likes it. She said um, that it was good. So, you know, you always worry when you're doing a commission or when, and especially something that's so important to a person, you really want to try to get it right. And that's hard. That's um, not hard, but I don't know how to express it. I don't know how to explain to you the emotion of doing something like this. Because it's important. It's special. So that's what I'm trying to do. Um, as you can see, it takes a long time. This is now probably sped up, let's see, probably four times fast in a minute. It's going to go to eight times fast in order to try to get as much of the process into a shortened video so that you can see the process and understand it and perhaps perhaps try to duplicate it. I think I would like to teach this as a class um, at some point because people seem really interested in paper painting and uh, my process and I think that a actual hands-on class would be fun. I'm just not sure exactly where I'm going to get get uh, students. Um, we'll see. Maybe sometime in 2019, of course. 2018 is winding down, and we're all thinking about the holidays and our loved ones and our decorations and the kindness of the season. So... I need to start making plans for 2019 for what I'm going to do. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I still don't know. So I've uh, pretty much finished my collaging onto the face. As you can see, I've left the eyes and the nose uh, empty there because I've drawn some of those parts on the other side of the paper. So there, that long skinny thing that you see there on the right hand side is the collar. There's the eyes, there's the nose. Um, I guess I'm working on the nose right now, probably. Yes, I think I am. And those pieces then can be trimmed out and placed a lot easier because they're separate pieces. So now we're getting into multiple layers here. Now there's a layer of, of deli paper over the top of a layer of deli paper, but it doesn't matter. The paper's so thin and translucent that it's just really irrelevant that it's there. I wouldn't recommend doing that type of a process with like cardstock or something because then now you can really see the depth of the layers, but when you're doing it with such a thin paper, it, it works out fine. So working down the body, starting to fill in the body and I think this yeah that's where I trimmed it because yeah it took me a lot longer the, to fill out all the rest of his chest and his legs and the whole bit so and there you can see the completed background that I did and I left that section in the middle blank because I was going to put the dog over it so there was no point in completely covering there in the middle ish the middle slightly right so now the dog uh, Barlow is on there and you can see some of the branches coming in from the left you can see the lake or river you can see some of the trees on the right the hill in the background the um, clouds and sky and now I'm going to fill in small details there's a few places around where I felt that a different color or a different um, shade needs to be like when you go from dark to light sometimes the line is too harsh and so you need to go in with a gray you know I've got the black I've got the white I need to put a gray in there to fill in <coughs> and to kind of tone things so that's what I'm doing now is using small pieces of paper to tone things to make it more smooth I don't want it to be completely smooth it's art it's not a, and it's a collage not a painting so um, it needs to look like what it is I'm making sure that the canvas all the way around has paper covering it in the right way that it should be. Yeah, there was a piece right there that was coming up, so I had to peel it back and re-stick it with uh, my glue. Of course, this is Liquitex Matte Gel Medium, which is my favorite type of medium for doing this type of a process. 
And I have some gift cards that I use to smooth bubbles down and things like that. So now I'm working on his collar and his tags. There was um, kind of a reddish colored one and then kind of a silvery colored dog bone one behind it uh, in, the, in one of the photographs. So I'm putting those on, silvery blue and red. And then I need to make the, the collar itself. And it appeared to me in the photograph that it was maybe like a braided or um, what do you call that when you take the, the paracord and you, uh, is it macrame? You know, knots. It, it seemed like it, it, that's what kind of collar it was, was made out of cord that was maybe macrame into a collar. So that's what I'm trying to portray here with my um, stenciled paper there had some blue and gray stencils on it and then of course there's a shadow over the collar underneath Barlow's uh, mouth so I need to get that in there too and the little ring that that was hooked from the collar to the tags you know all those little details they're tiny and um, you need to make sure that you get an impression of them correctly done So now the eyes, the eyes, um, very important, very, very important part. And they appeared to be like a golden, rusty, shiny color. So those are the, the papers that I picked. And then I trimmed out the little eyes. I'm putting a few different colors to try to get the shadow on the back and then um, the shininess in the front, making sure that they're dry. And then, um, trimming them out so that I can place them in the right places, hopefully. <laughs> the eyes have it and the eyes are important, so you need to make sure you've got them right if you can. The eye is uh, being placed slightly wrong changes the entire impression of what you're doing. So. Got to get them on there correctly, being careful to place them down with my fingers, making sure that they're um, completely glued down and sealed up. And then I let this thing dry for a while before I went on to the um, detailing that I like to do. I, I enjoy this detailing part and I like to, I just like lines around things and I'm not making line lines. I'm making it kind of a watercolor effect using the Pentel pocket brush, which is a India ink brush pen. And so it's permanent when it's dry. Of course, this uh, canvas was then um, sealed with varnish before I was completed, before it was completed, so that it's all sealed in and um, UV protected and everything. So. I used archival paints and papers, and then I also, of course, used a medium to glue it down and seal it. That is going to be permanent. And then um, the varnish over the top finishes off to make it complete so that it will last for a long, long time. A long, long, long time. Long past the time that you or I will be around to see it. <laughs> so when you're doing something for someone that's this special, you really want to make sure that it's something that's going to last and not fade or fall apart or anything. So I'm using that pocket brush and then blending with a water brush to get this kind of shadowy watercolor effect around stuff. And then I do come in eventually with some acrylic in the white Posca pin, which I do in the same way. I um, put some on and then I blend it with that water to, you know, soften it and make it kind of watery effect to just add the details. Around the eyes, I'm using the pin in more of a pin way, not, not um, blending it, but then making it 
you know, adding in the details of the pupil of the eye and things like that. And then, of course, I'll use the white to add the catch light in the eye. And um, around the muzzle here, he had some lighter uh, hair. And I wanted to get some highlight there. And, you know, just back and forth, back and forth, trying to add the shadows and highlights in the way that I do so that there's more detail to the painting. So I hope you've you guys have enjoyed this and um, have learned something maybe or got some ideas for something that you might want to do. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below if you have one. I'll be sure to answer you. And of course, subscribe. If you want to know when the videos are coming out, subscribe and turn on your notification bell so that you know they're coming out. And um, share this. You can pin this on Pinterest in your paper painting collage pin board to, so that other people can find it and learn how to do my style of paper painting collage. So that is it for me and Barlow. We say goodbye. Thanks for watching.